What's happening, Shredder Nation? Happy Tuesday. Welcome to episode number 49 of Shred Your Body. I'm your host, Jesse James Jemnick. Um, I am so excited tonight. I know I say I'm excited every single week, and I truly am excited every single freaking week that I get another chance to do this. Um, the ER Shred community has absolutely altered my life in so many ways. It's filled so many holes. And the very last piece of my heart, uh, if you know me and you're a friend of mine, you know, I just recently had a baby uh, literally a couple days ago. Um, and the last piece of that uh, has officially been filled. So I am one happy dude. Uh, I feel like a million dollars. I'm 42. I feel like I'm freaking got the energy of a 19 year old. I told y'all that it would be like this. Like I've been training like this for years now. Um, and this is why I think health is wealth, right? For all these crazy situations in life and my guest tonight, oh my God, um, she's a rock star. No, like she has been a cosmetologist for 32 years. Um, she's 61 years old. Uh, she looks like she's like maybe 40. Like it's, it's freaking crazy. Um, she's got a daughter. She has two amazing grandchildren. She has literally built a six figure plus, um, income and she has helped thousands of other women and men now um, do the same and get their health and recognize it. And some of them have got wealth and she's just an amazing soul. She's a health coach. She's a life coach. Um, her passion is truly helping other women. And I am so dang excited to bring her to you. So without further ado, um, welcome to Shred Your Body, Barbara. Wow. Thank you. I, that's yeah. That's some shoes to fill, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> I man. know well, they're listen, my own. Those are your sounds... shoes. Those are your I, shoes. It's... So I gotta fill. Thank I gotta you. fill them, uh, and hopefully bring out the best of you in this, so we can we can get mass value. It sounds crazy when someone else talks about you like that, but thank you and congratulations on your baby. Thank you. So yes. excited for you. So That's excited. Good. He's like Yay. the cutest little munchkin ever. Yeah. Um. And I am just sucking You're up every, every it's second. Obsession. It is obsession. It's become an obsession. Yeah, you know? for sure. Yeah. My grandbabies sure. are that to me now. They're my yeah. obsession. And your your grandbabies are little. They're little. Well, I have a 10-year-old and a um, not, she's 20 months old today. 10-year-old and 20 months old. So those, the 20-month-old is still pretty fresh. She's a beast. She's, yeah. yeah. She's, yeah. That's good. She keeps me Great. on my toes. That's why I do what I do. A fantastic. Yeah. So listen, I, I want to share all the amazing of today. Um, but like myself and like everybody else that I've ever talked to and everybody that I've ever coached, um, we all have amazing stories. Um, and I love to get to know people through their story. You and I met because of this amazing community, the ER Shred community. Um, I, I kind of knew of you, but I didn't know you. Um, so we get to know each other. I know you and I share something in common where we both are athletes and we're on the same team, right? For yes. you know, our nutrition company, yes. um, you know, our, our fulfillment company with the ER Shred. And uh, that's pretty much it. So you shared with me, um, I kind of want to go back to where this all started for you, if you don't mind, to, to get people to know you. Um, you shared with me that you grew up with necessarily not healthy habits in your family and stuff. Um, kind of explain to me, like, what was life like growing up? What did, what did you mean by that, if you don't mind? Well, I thought it was healthy. Um, but then as I really got into this, I realized that... Um, it really wasn't so healthy, but sure. um, I things like the cereals. Uh, I remember so my when we were there was four of us, and my mom would take one of us each time to the grocery store. And when I would go, I would get things like Wheaties and um, Special K, and then my my siblings would go and they would get the um, Fruit Loops and the king vitamin and like all the sugar cereals and they would, pebbles. yeah i don't even know if they had them then but anyway <laughs> they would get all like the sugary stuff <laughs> and they would get so mad at me they're like no it's not her turn again she always comes home with it like grape nuts was one of my favorites right yeah so uh 
I knew early on that like I was, I've never been a sugar baby. I've, I've never liked sugar. It's never been like here for me. Salt yeah. is like here for me. Um, but, but I, I, I entered into the kitchen at about 11 to 13 years of age. My dad was military and my mom was a stay at home mom. Of course, uh -huh. we're talking in the sixties. I was born in 1960. So it was, a, you know, single, the, the, the father made the income and mom stayed at home. Yeah. Well, then my mom decided to go to work. And in our house, it was whoever did the cooking didn't have to clean and vice versa. Well, I don't like to clean. So I was always in the kitchen. Yeah. Uh, so uh, so I, I started my hand in, in cooking at about 13 years of age, making meals for a family of six. And um, and then I thought I always ate healthy. You know, yeah. to me it was healthy. I didn't know the difference between healthy and clean. And I don't know that. But. I also thought that bro broccoli was supposed to taste like cheese sauce. Right, right. <laughs> when I tasted broccoli for the first time with just like steamed broccoli with a little olive oil, lemon yeah. juice, and salt on there, it's like, yeah. oh my God, what is this? This is amazing. Yeah. So that's the unhealthy part of it. Uh, tater tot hot, I'm from Minnesota originally. So tater tot hot, tot hot dish, um, you know, all of the, all the hot dishes and the stews and, just all the stuff that really, honestly, as we learn, as we get older, that really ended up not being good for me. And it brought my family to a lot of unhealthy habits as well. Mm -hmm. And I was 48 years old at the time that I just woke up one February morning and said, this is it. I've got to change my lifestyle. My mom at the time was about 125 pounds overweight. And it yeah. scared me. It scared yeah. me because that's all yeah. I knew, right? Like we're the product of our own environments. And yeah. so we have to educate ourselves. And so that's what brought me to, at 48 years old, I got into um, learning the difference between eating healthy and eating clean. And so clean means I removed all processed, prepackaged white sugar and dairy out of my diet. Yeah. And I had some pretty incredible results that got me to the stage for the very uh, first time at 48 yeah. years old as a figure and bikini competitor. And I, I talk about obsessions. I became obsessed with what I was putting in my body mm -hmm. and then really learning ingredients. Um, I actually teach with my clients. I'll go through, I'll zoom with them or FaceTime with them. What's in their refrigerator, what's in their cupboards. And we go through ingredients and learn the macros, proteins, carbs, and fats, what it is, why it's in there, what a serving is like, just mm. cause it's this, just cause this is the serving size doesn't mean that's what you should put in your body. That's just telling you what the nutrients of right. that product of those servings. So yeah, diving deep into it sometimes with my clients is I'm very passionate about that part of it, but that was the big eye opener for me. The eye opener for you, meaning like when you kind of had your own realization Mm -hmm. when you made your shift, right? Correct. Yes. I, I, you, I'm sure you've probably heard me scream this on a video now, right? Somewhere in this community, like you got to get a slap across the face. It was um, you know what I mean? And, and kind of had this realization of like, holy crap, like food's really that powerful. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because you don't realize, like you went from explaining how you thought broccoli with cheese sauce and Wheaties and everything was healthy. We have this perception, right? Mm -hmm. Depending upon where we learn from, who we learn from. Um, you know, sometimes I like to say to people that, you know, I, I love when they, oh, somebody always, I feel like we throw this thing around so much like genetics, 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 like, oh, I got this because genetics. I'm yeah. like, well, is it that? Or is like two decades of like family education, maybe misstrued? Yeah, maybe, exactly. Do you know what I mean? Like, and it's crazy. Cause you kind of went through this whole story. You went from like childhood to like 48, Right. And then yeah. passionately helping. But I find I, I kind of pulled those things out, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, so and I think a lot of people, do you find a lot of a lot of people you coach, Barb, do you, do they um do you find kind of the same story, like the same childhood story? Um, not really, you know, learning only learning like what you knew, you know what I mean? Like you only know what you know from where yeah. you know, yeah. you know, and then you get to adulthood, and a lot of people I feel are still confused. Um, you know, you said that, that we learn as adults, but I, I find that people are still very confused and I'm so happy to hear that as a coach, you go through all that, which may sound simple, but uh, so many struggle. people don't know it. Like It's a struggle because like, like you said, we don't know what we don't know. 
Yeah. And I was just talking to someone actually right before I was just on a, a coaching call with someone and she's talking about these things that, of exactly what we're talking about. And I think the biggest thing for me, first of all, if you shouldn't have it, you shouldn't own it. Mm -hmm. And if you want it, then earn it. Mm. So if you want that ice cream with your family, go have the ice cream with your family, but go for a workout, mm -hmm. right? Make sure that you ate clean the rest, earn it. Yeah. I'm not saying reward yourself with food because I don't do that. I like to reward myself with clothes and shoes, right? Yeah. So you get to another side. Well, can, I, can I pause? Can I pause? Yeah. Um, you and I speak the same lingo. I love you. Um, okay. You, you, I want people to, to, you just had a nugget right there that I want somebody to steal. Never, ever, 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 please. I'm begging you, please don't ever reward yourself with food. You're not an animal. You're not a dog. Um, you're not giving yourself a treat. Go buy shoes, go spend time <laughs> with your family, go on a hike, um, go spend, go do something. You know what I mean? Like that's a reward of life. I don't understand why everything we celebrate food. Um, right. it, it's a problem in, in my opinion. Um, and I'm so glad you said that. So I wanted to highlight that. I'm sorry. Yeah. So, and, and, and don't get me wrong. Like we do and, and like teaching the new habits, right. As, as, as we start learning these new habits and the rewards, um, I make homemade ice cream. I make everything homemade. Like again, yeah. I love the kitchen. I make homemade ice cream. I make a shake in my blender, mm -hmm. just like I was going to drink it, only mm -hmm. I throw it into my ice cream maker. And 20 minutes later, my husband and 10-year-old granddaughter, who we have overnight, probably two, three nights a week, uh -huh. and we sit down, and that's what we have. That, yeah. That's our dessert, and, and we're rewarded. Um, yeah. The Clean Plate Club, let's go back to this. The Clean Plate Club, I grew up with the clean plate club, you mm -hmm. eat everything that's put in front of you. My family was a little bit different. It came to being very strict. If you said you didn't like something, you got twice as much of it. Gotcha. So I learned very quick that the things that I really liked, I'm like, oh, this doesn't taste right tonight. And then it's like, you get more, yeah. more for you. I'm like, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but the, I think the clean plate club from, from my era and from my time really, was damaging to us as well because it was like there's children starving in Africa. You eat everything that's put on your plate, right? Yes. And then so they guilted you into eating everything. Mm. Um, mm. Another thing that I teach is that the size of our hand is what we're supposed to put in our bodies. Yeah. So if my husband were to come over here right now. He's got his hands are the size of a baseball mitt. There's no way I can eat the same plate that he has, right? right? And then my granddaughter, who has a ten year old hand. If we can just remember that God designed our bodies a certain way, we eat, you know, bigger portions as we get bigger for that reason. They, we yeah. just can't. And people don't understand that until they're taught that. And that's a, that's a portion size is like we're gluttons. Yeah. And portion size is huge when it comes to the nutrition aspect of what for we're sure. For sure. Um, I want to hold, I got a, I got this like thing fire in my brain that I'm going to hold for a second um, and come back to something that you were just talking about, but throw it into kind of with ER shred. Um, but I want to back up real quick and just kind of pride a little bit. Um, you are explaining to me, you were brought up clean your plate. You were brought up, you know, with certain things, thinking they were healthy. You got on this mission of into cooking and kind of fell in love with that passion, which I think is so important. I'm um, having that connection with food, which so many people unfortunately don't get to get, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? And don't realize that that's a huge connection in your health, sure. in your overall health as a holistic approach is, is that connection to your food and sourcing it and cooking it and being one with it, if you will. It's kind of mm -hmm. like you're, you're embodying that is, you know, you, it's like you're, you're living this life now, this like years of, you know what I mean? Doing. Right. Um, and I want everybody to do that. Um, <laughs> what, what kind of like, so what sparked, like, where did your passion come from? Like where, where did the health, I mean, at 48, you said is when like, so explain to me at 48, like what happened where you were like, okay, enough is enough. I had a friend of mine, we had gone on a weekend, um, beer, um, uh, dog sledding. I, okay. I used to volunteer and, and, it, it, and it was winter and we had stopped for breakfast and I said, do you want to split an omelet? And she's like, split an omelet. Are you kidding? I need all the protein of those eggs. And no, I'm not going to split anything. And I'm like, okay, this is 
like something triggered and I'm like, wait a second, I need to learn more about this. And yeah. so that was the very, the very first thing. And mm -hmm. um, so I just, honestly, I read a book by Bill Phillips um, and then uh, um, Tosca Reno had the eat clean diet. I read her book. And then I, I actually had a trainer in the gym at the time. And here was a trigger for me when she said that to me. She's yeah. like, you need this protein in your body to build muscle. And I'm like, well, I'm going to the gym for that. Like, this right. is how naive I was at 48 years old. Well, I'm going to the gym for that. But wait a second. I'm going to the gym. I've got this trainer that I've hired three days a week, but nothing's changed. Mm. So I called him up that next morning and I said, I've got, I read that book in a day. I said, I've got a plan. I want you for Monday, Wednesday, Friday, weight training. I'm going yeah. to do Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, or strength training. Um, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, I'm going to do cardio on my own, but I'm changing my nutrition. Yeah. Now, he didn't do any nutrition with me. Okay. And so I changed that nutrition, and 12 weeks later, I was like, wow. Yeah. He, that's when I removed the process prefect. Then a girl comes up to me in the gym, and she's like, um, Barbie, do you want to do a competition with me? And I'm like, I don't know anything about them. I mean, it seems yeah. like fun. I always wanted to be Miss America pageant walk, you know, <laughs> with all, with the, the roses, right? That, that was me. That was a goal. I was a model. Yeah. I was 18 years old. Like that was a goal was to be Miss America. And I didn't, I didn't do that, yeah. but I thought, Oh, this could be like my stage. Okay. Um, but learning that, that protein I needed in my body to build my mm. muscle, not just the weights in the gym, was like that was that slap across the face or the smack mm. in the forehead moment. I love that. I love that. So you so that's awesome. So you just you that was your that was your start into what then grew into such a passion, mm -hmm. an extreme passion. Like I know that world um very well. And it's an extreme passion. Yeah. Um, and you you just, you literally just, everything is just, you know what I mean? You you fall in love with the whole feeling and, and the oil yeah. and everything around it. Um, but that's cool to learn how you got started like that. Like it's just this, it's this realization, it's this connection. Like who knows how it starts for you watching um, right. now, later, who, who knows? Um, but pay attention. You know what I mean? Like you never know what can spark, what motivation comes from. I think it's around every corner. If we keep our eyes open, um, most of the time we're just walking around closed minded and, and closed eyed all the damn time. We don't see half the opportunity that's out there for crying out loud. Um, but that was cool to learn how you, um, how you got started, you know, for, for me, like OCR racing, when I did my first one, I was like, Oh, I can actually be an athlete when I wasn't, I kind of like lost that from being an athlete growing up to like having a little gap, like, uh, okay, I'm not going to be a pro, but how else can I do this? You know? And then I went on this first one from like bodybuilding and suffocated myself. And I was like, Oh, this is really cool. And then I went, <laughs> so, you know, that's so cool. So, so you, you have this realization and then boom, you do these comp, you get into these competitions mm -hmm. and you've been pretty successful with these competitions. Like go ahead and go ahead and toot your own horn for a second. Like what have you been <laughs> able to do? What have you been able to do uh, in competition world since you started at 48 years old? 48. So I, my first competition I did was October of 2008. And I took, I was, I entered three. I took a first place in my age group, a uh, first place in novice, because it was my very first competition. So I could, and then second place in the 35 and over. And I was okay. 48 at the time. Bam. And then I found out that there was a competition three weeks later. And I thought, oh, well, I'm already competition ready. So I'm ready. Well. My yeah. trainer's like, it's not really that good of an idea because the sodium in your body and you're going to, you know, balloon up and this is what's going to happen. And I'm like, I'm going to give it a try anyway. And yeah. I did. And I took another first place, first place. I was novice in that one again. <laughs> um, and so, yeah. And I, and I fell in love with, with not, I fell in love with the stage, but I also fell in love with, wow, look at what your body can do. Yeah. Look at what, by a commitment, by doing the right things. And you guys, I want you to understand something. It's not what, it's not only what you're putting in your body, it's what you're not putting in your body. Sure. Right. 
So when I learn like even the label of our of our chicken, because, you know, as competitors, the, and this is when I first started, this is wouldn't be me now. I'm honestly I'm hoping to compete in um, March and then again in um, June mm -hmm. of this next year, mm -hmm. um, which I've done. My competition is completely different from when I first started. Um, but even like like your frozen chicken, like you go and get a package of frozen chicken because it's easy, chicken's good, right? And then, but you look at the label and the sodium on there is so different. And yeah. I don't know if you guys heard, but on the news the other day, like they're actually starting to pay attention what's in our food. That's the right. sodium part of it. That's not our that's not our sea salt that we're talking about that, that Jesse right. and I are gonna talk about in a minute, but the sodium that's in there and it's so scary. And that's why my trainer said to me, you're going to get this water retention back in your body. You're going to balloon up. It's really hard to do a competition again three weeks later. Your body isn't going to respond properly to that. I wouldn't recommend doing it. Yeah. And I was just really aware of what I was putting in my body because that's what we do. But all of these other yeah. figure, friend, or figure bikini friends of mine that were doing competitions, like three, four, seven days later, they're 20 pounds up. And then they're like, yeah, I'm in a... I'm going to carb load for the next three months because I want to put on some muscle. And I'm like, wow, there's yeah. a little misconception here. Let's just like slow this horse down. Yeah. And it, did you, did you experience that? Um, Cause I know, you know, I'm very, I'm pretty familiar with the bodybuilding world. Um, I, I get it. Like people don't understand, like you go through like the six month, you know, decreasing carbs and stripping your body right. and stripping the water out and sucking it. Like you, like you guys see these pictures of like shreddedness, like, and people on stage, like that ain't a healthy place in time. <laughs> right. Barb, like that's, that's not that. your healthiest point in your life. Right. Off lifestyle. Um, I, don't, I don't think people get it, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, And then after, right. This creates this like crazy thing with food. Cause then after like people will go and gorge, you know what yeah. I mean? They'll like, they'll start like, it's almost like they're, they're starved, starved, starved. They create this thing with food, carbs back, carbs back. And then all of a sudden it's like, whoa, bam. And they, their body goes through these crazy hormonal shifts and all kinds of stuff is happening. And then they do it again. And then it's, it creates this cycle. Right. Um, and you said you do competitions differently now than then, cause I'm sure you've taken all the information you've learned from obviously the company that we're partnered with, you know, mm -hmm. what I feel is, honestly, the best nutrition that I've seen in 20 Hands years down. on a full spectrum mm -hmm. from certification to raw ingredients to third party testing to, I mean, gosh, like I've seen it all. And I'm sure you have too, being in this yeah. industry, like, right. Um, so you got to be careful with this stuff. Um, but I'm sure, you know, you've changed it now to where you're not going through that and stuff anymore. Right. Did you, did well, you and I, that and so I would see these girls go through this, like even a couple of them would be hospitalized because they would like water retention was so I never went through that. I've always, even now at 61 years old, um, I'm, well, I'm not, I'm, I'm in a shred right now, but, um, my stage, my stage weight is. I still can't believe you're 61 years old, by the Thank way. You. <laughs> oh, holy Jesus. But this is why I do what I do. Like, I, yeah. But anyway, so, so my stage weight was between always between like 128 and 130. Yeah. And I was anywhere, be, I was between 10 and 12% body fat. When I was you did, figure, you did figure, right? You did, I started you did. with figure and then I went into bikini. To bikini. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and you know, as a hairstylist, it's, it puts a, it's, it was a lot on my shoulders and my back and I had a really hard time with the posing and I just couldn't get it to pop right, right yeah. in the, in the figure. And that's why I switched over to bikini, yeah. but, um, and we're not going to get into, you know, the classification of bodybuilding in this call, but just so people know there, there's a big difference in figure and bikini in what judges are looking for and proportions to body and posing yeah. and stuff to that nature. So we'll just leave it at that. So I, I liked the Victoria's secret one runway model with muscle. That was, gotcha. that's how I, that's how I identify. That's them. a great explanation. <laughs> Flirty. It's sexy. It's fun. I like um, but but I, even now, like I stay within 10 pounds of that. I'm hundred, I'm 141 right now. My, my goal weight on a normal, um, everyday weight for me is 133 pounds. 
where that number comes from, I don't know. But that's where my clothes fit the best. That's where I feel the best, right? And then about 15 to 18 pounds, and I'm at or um, percent body fat, and I'm at about 22% right now. Mm. So that's like so comfortable for me. Yeah. Okay, you just said something that's that was amazing to me again. So here's a woman, folks, that has been doing this for a long time. And has been in this industry that is sometimes can get you mm, self-absorbed, sometimes can get you uh, mm. going down the wrong spiral, right? Yeah. It's there. And the reason, the reason that Barb still does this, okay, is not because she's ripped, not because she's jacked, not because, because she feels good. And it's how she feels the best and how her clothes feel the best. Mm. Uh, like from a health coach perspective, ah, like yeah. if people can have this realization that that is ultimate health, praise Jesus, right? Like, our, clothes, our clothes need to be our barometer. For sure. Not a scale. A, a scale is an okay thing once in a while, but our clothes need to be the biggest barometer and, yeah. and, and, and visual like, Take your clothes off, look at yourself in the mirror naked and say, I love you. I love every part of you from head to toe. Now, abs, we're going to work on you for a little bit. We're just going to pay some special, right? Talk to yourself. You have to talk to yourself in such a crazy, positive way. You know what? I have the, you know, I got the crepey skin coming in here and on my arms, but you know what? I'm going to love it anyway. Maybe I'm going to find a cream or now that now that we have something that works yeah, really yeah. well that I use and that I absolutely love. But we need to look at the non-scale victories in our lives. And when we wake up every single morning, the very first thing that we say to ourselves is, I love you. And you mm. have to start your day like that before you get into the kids and the getting ready for work and your drive time and whatever else it is. And all of this stuff starts coming in. And like, I have little things uh, like I always have a soothing rock. This yeah. is my, I always know I need to, if I start that stinking thinking, my beautiful friend, Lenny Evans, who you know really well, stinking sure. thinking comes in, this is what you grab instead of that self-talk that's, that destroys us. Speaking of Lenny, can you, can you see the comment on the screen? Yeah, Lenny. Mwah. He's my brother. He walked me down the aisle six years ago. When we got uh, Lenny is like, seriously a gift. <laughs> yeah. Um, Okay. This is a lot of good stuff. This is, I can tell, I can tell that, that you're a really amazing coach. And Thank I know you. that I know this because you're not just one of these people in the fitness industry who's focused on asparagus and counting, although that's part of teaching for understanding education purposes, but you also have all these tips and tricks. And, you know, I think you're a health, where'd you go? Where'd you do health coaching? Um, I, I am. I, okay, so we, you and I did the same exact thing. Yep. So this that makes, makes then this makes absolute complete freaking sense to me. No wonder <laughs> I like I'm so on board with you. Like, I'm a 2013 graduate. I know yeah, it's like really she's filling, to know she's <laughs> filling what's called the circle of life. Yes. You know, she's making which is a powerful exercise, by the way, guys. Google circle of life. You can get it for free. You can print it out. Um, it's it's literally an amazing exercise if you do it honestly with yourself. Um, mm -hmm. And it will show you where you're at and we need to balance. And I think the more in balance you can create everything, which I know, I know, <laughs> I get it. I get it. <laughs> um, but that's why coaches like Barb and, and, and myself are great. Like we, you know, you go through this and, and it's funny, like we learn as we continue to go too, you know, which is really cool. So, mm -hmm. um, but I wanted to point that out to you. So I, I can see that and feel that from you. Thank you. All these little things. All right. So let's get into this now. What in the world brought you to ER Shred? Like you're a healthy mama rocking it. You're crunching. You're doing your thing. Like where did ER Shred come into your life? You're going to have to pick yourself up off the floor in a second when I tell well, you. Well, I'm that. sitting tonight, which is rare, but you I'm just going to over a break when I can. You, you might still fall over. Okay. I'll break so, myself. All of the training, all of the education that I have, all the coaching that I've done, um, I watched a documentary on Netflix and I thought, hmm, this is interesting. 
I, so this was in, gosh, December of 2019. Okay. Nope. And which documentary? Now, 21. Yeah. Um, uh, Game Changers. Game Changers. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm big into football. I love my Minnesota Vikings. Very I, interesting documentary. Yes. I'm very, very well aware. Because, well, first of all, me being an athlete. At yes. 48 years old, I became an athlete. I wasn't yes. one before because um, nobody wanted me on their team. Um, Left-handed and dyslexia, so to catch a ball, I'd have to <laughs> ball with the glove in my left hand, take the glove off, and throw the ball. It's like we can't have her. But I was a good cheerleader all those years. Anyway, so I watched Game Changers, and most of them are Tennessee Titans, and they were a new team coming in, and they're amazing, and 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 I love the underdog anyway, right? Coming in. Um, so we're watching this um, documentary, and I told my husband, I'm like, something clicked. We're going to do this. Yeah. We're going plant-based. And he's like, whatever, babe, you do the grocery shopping, you do the cooking. I'm, I'm with whatever you did do. Now here's, here's the biggest reason we did this. Okay. First of all, that documentary. Second of all, I was going to my doctor and I was having pellets of estrogen and testosterone put in my butt in my back, in my low back. And the, I'm just, I don't know if you know what pellet, what these pellets are, but they're hormones. Yeah. And you cut a little slit in your body and they push these pellets in there mm -hmm. and they sew it up or glue it, whatever. And then these pellets dissolve in your body and you've now got that estrogen and t testosterone. And then I was taking a progesterone pill. Mm -hmm. Now, of course I'm thinking, oh, of course I'm menopausal. Well, I was already, I had already gone through menopause. But now these things are coming back in and I've got thyroid issues, which I've had for many, many years. Why am I putting an animal protein in my body that's injected with hormones, but I'm going to the doctor because my hormones are messed up? I'm just going to stop eating meat. So I did. Okay. First three months, I feel amazing. I'm doing everything doing all these vegetables. And I'm thinking, I got to get some protein in my body. Yeah. I had lost about 12 pounds, which I didn't necessarily have 12 pounds to, I would have had 12 pounds to lose if 12 of it would have been body fat converted into muscle. Okay. Then that would have been one thing, but it wasn't. And so I losing the weight, but my muscle tone is going away. Mm. And, and then I'm thinking, Oh, maybe I do need this testosterone because I can't, I can't build a muscle to save my life right now because I don't have that protein. So then I start looking for other sources of protein. And what I did 13 years ago in 2008 is I removed all processed, prepackaged white sugar and dairy out of my diet. Mm -hmm. And in 2019, when we started this, I started using processed food because here I go, I'm getting these bean burgers, which I couldn't do. I, I didn't do the beans. But then I find these, um, just the, I can taste it right now and it makes me want to vomit the taste of the, um, the, the one of those burgers. The, um, like the Beyond Meat burgers? Yes. Oh. <laughs> yes. Like, and I'm yeah. like, every bite, I'm like, oh, this is so good. Isn't it good, honey? And my husband's like, yes. <laughs> whatever you say. I mean, God bless his heart because he goes with whatever. Well, he's makes. a good man. He is a good man. So, but it's processed and then I start looking and then the milk. So then my grandbaby is born and she has a milk intolerance, uh, not, um, uh, not milk intolerance, a, um, a protein. Lactose. Lactose. Okay. No, it's the protein. Protein, it's okay. not protein. I'm sorry. Anyway, it's in the milk. So I told my daughter, I'm like, um, no, be careful, be careful because there is like a whole bunch of junk in this milk that I realized that I'm drinking this almond milk and it's like since when does almonds produce milk and then now oat milk and blah blah whatever you look at the ingredients in there and it's scary what's in there so it's like okay now I have to find a milk because I hadn't done dairy in 13 years then along comes Lenny Evans I sent him a message in December I was watching an Eric Worre thing so for those of you who are in network marketing you know who mm -hmm. he is he is my guru yeah. watching his event and um, he 
uh, I sent Lenny a message and I said, I'm watching Eric Worre right now and I need a mentor. Would you mentor me? And he's like, oh my God, we've missed you so much. Cause I kind of took a little bit of a hiatus mm. from the company for a while and it just, you know, shiny object. And um, he's like, but you have to do this. I want to introduce you to something. So he invited me into the ER shred and I looked at it and I'm like, Randy, guess what? <laughs> We're starting back on meat tomorrow. I was so excited. Everything I started, like I watched. It was just like that. Editing. Just like that. Yeah. I was so happy because it's like, I didn't miss chicken. I, I, in fact, I still don't eat chicken. I can't, like I kind of have a hard time with it. But it's like a steak. I hadn't eaten meat in 20, I hadn't eaten red meat in 25 years, Jesse. 25 oh. years that I had eaten red meat. Until. Bad for you. Until the ER shred. Yes. One year ago, December will be a year that I, well, January 11th, was it? That was my first ER shred. So, man, there's so, <laughs> my brain's like. Well, if you were standing, you'd fall down. <laughs> um, so, Susan, you know, Susan Rothman, our um, yes. ER shred holistic nurse, and she's on our board. Um, she did the same thing. And she, she commented, all upside down, I bought into the same lies. She's been in this space of holistic nutrition and, and herbal healing um, for 40 years. Mm. And, I, you know, it's crazy to me because I've bought into these lies too. Yeah. And then we, we pass them on to the people that we're trying to help, not mm -hmm. because we don't know any better, not because we're doing it for any other reason. Like we're doing it ourselves. Like you're, you're, I can already tell like you're the person that goes first and you're like in, and awesome. that's kind of like how my whole journey over 20 years has been. Like, you're basically describing me. You like, you get this thing. It makes sense for the most part. And you're like, yep, because you're always looking for the edge. You get yeah. the edge, you know, once you but get let that me try fire, it first and then I'll let you know if it works. Exactly. Right. Exactly. <laughs> um, game changers was one of those tricky ones um, that was really, really compelling the way that they spun things. And when I did some bigger digging, I follow this guy who's got, um, he's got his PhD and he's just, he's very blunt. He's very raw and it's just raw science. And he ripped this thing apart. And I was like, Oh, right. And at the end of the day, um, the funding actually came from vegetarian source. So when we watch these documentaries and we see these things, I think the big lesson from this Barb and is you brought it up too, is don't stop questioning why. Mm -hmm. Like, like before you just like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, give it a shot. Yes, be open-minded. Yes, be, you know, I think that's the beauty of things, but really start to question, especially when it comes to nutrition, right? The more we question, I think the better people are going to start to understand mm -hmm. their own bodies and see what's working for them. Um, and it's funny how even though you jumped one way, you're still always questioning you know what I mean? The, those things. So, yeah. well, and even like, um, so 2000, let me, let me back up even a, a little bit here in, um, so 2010 is, is, um, so I, when I was behind the chair as a hairstylist, I, so 2008, when I started this transformation, um, I had some of my clients and my friends going, okay, I want to do what you're doing, but I don't want to get to stage. I'm like, perfect. I'll help you. Yeah. So I would write their meal plans for them. So I either had a client in my chair doing their hair mm -hmm. every 30 minutes. I worked on a 30 minute schedule. So 30 minute hair client or 30 minute lifestyles with Barb was the name of my business at the time. Gotcha. Now, now it's called rock your age, but the, the, or I would bring them into a room and I would have, I would write their meal plan for them and, and a workout program. So then I became a, a certified trainer as well, but I mm -hmm. did group training. I didn't, I had no desire to be a personal trainer, but I did yeah. group training. Um, and then, so, so that brought me, that's what brought me into on the business side of it, which then two years in, in 2010 is when my friend Emily is like, Barbie, you need to take a look at these products. I know. And, and right away I said, no, cause there's milk in there. I can't do milk. And she goes, but it's an undenatured whey protein. Yeah. That's different. I want you to put it in your body and tell me how you feel. Yeah. So we met up and I honestly, this is how. This is how sensitive my body was. And and it, when Lenny talks about ER shred, it concerned me a little bit because I hadn't done dairy for 13 years. But 
but when she said that, I said, okay, so we met up and I had, I had about an hour and a half drive ahead of me and she gave me a bar and she said, eat this and let me know how you feel. Mm -hmm. So I would take a bite of it, but I had to be about five minutes from where I knew my next turnoff was on the freeway. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I got all, I didn't even have to stop. I got all the way home. I finished the bar. I got up in the morning, I drank the shake and I'm like, Okay, you know, talk yeah. about going first. I was willing to put that in my body and experience what I thought was going to happen before I introduced it to anyone else. Yeah. It didn't happen. So I'm like, what is this? And then, of course, my brain goes into what's the science behind this. Mm -hmm. And that was December of 2010 when I got involved in on the business side of it. Mm. Interesting. Very interesting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you do, so 25 years of no meat, 15 years of no dairy, um, mm -hmm. all these myths and things and vegetables and don't do this, take this, add this, come to these realizations. Plant-based is kind of really not natural at all. If you really think about the breakdown of what most plant-based people are eating, right? It's actually pretty, pretty freaking scary. You're actually right. Um, when you actually break it down and think yeah. about it. Um, and I challenge you, if you are doing this, go ahead and just lay out all your ingredients for the day, like write it all out and actually take a look at it. At the end of the day, I think you'll be quite surprised. Um, mm -hmm. my cat is going ballistic at my door right now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the beginning of the uh, show, my cat would make an appearance in almost every video because she would really <laughs> go crazy um, at the door. And okay, so all of this, and then boom, Lenny Evans comes along and says, yep, I'll help you, but you have to do this with me. You jump all in and tell me what happens. Now, your husband did this with you, right? Because he just, okay, so you and your husband do this. And the 11 day you asked is just that it's 11 days. So what was your experience after 11 days? Well, my body responded really well. Um, I lost nine pounds. My husband lost 11 pounds. Um, I felt really light. Like mm -hmm. I didn't feel like anything was heavy and, and like weighing me down. I felt light. I, loved the idea of incubating the shakes. And I thought that was really interesting to do that. And then again, the science behind it. Um, was this the first that you heard of that or did yes. you hear about that? Okay. Very first time I'd ever heard about it. And, um, and then, and then our first meat meal was like, my husband looked at it. He still isn't super crazy, but he doesn't like the red in the meat. Like I have to completely cook his, like he likes even dry chicken, which I can't. Um, but anyway, yeah. Uh, so, so I just cook it a little bit differently for him and he'll eat it. Does he think, does he think that the red in the meat is blood? No, I keep telling him, he looks okay. at it. Like he teases me about it. He's like, okay. Ooh, you. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but he knows what it is. Um, I've educated him of course. So he, um, he loved it. And you know, he had a, he had a stigma. His brother had gout. Oh, okay. And it came, you know, in his mind, it came from red meat. Yeah. And so my husband, like, if we will go out, I'm like, oh, I want prime rib tonight, but I'm not going to eat a whole thing. And he's not going to eat any of it. So I never would. Yeah. Right. Um, so anyway, so that was a big thing for him. And I'm like, you're not going to get gout from this. I promise you, you won't. Uh, so our first, um, our first meat meal that we had was steak and we each had one and he's like you've got to be kidding me and i'm like you're gonna eat till you're full he goes i understand that i can but you're not gonna eat that yeah and i had two eggs on top and bacon and he's like there's no way in hell that you're going to do this mm. and i did i ate the mm. whole thing he's yeah. like you're gonna be kidding me like who are you and um and we just had a and, and then our two-day cleanses mm -hmm. back to back, we had done them before, wasn't a huge fan of cleansing. Mm -hmm. I just wasn't. I, I would always tell my people that I'm coaching that, you know, how important it is because I believe that it's important, but, you know, yeah. I'm years and years into this. I don't, yeah. Um, I know, well, I'm on day nine right now. So mm -hmm. 10 and 11 are coming up tomorrow yeah. and Thursday for me. Um, and 
is we just had such great results with it. And I shared it with a couple of people, Susan look, who's one of them who it, you, I know that you know who she is because she's so like, she's the, I don't I forget what she calls herself. She's very she's, renaissance. She's, 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 the the ER shred, she's the ER shred, shred warrior princess. Princess, shred and warrior princess. there's like dragon adipose fat slayer in there. Yes. <laughs> there's diet Coke slam against the tree slayer in there. There's throw your candy at somebody going down the street in there. <laughs> <laughs> she's amazing she, i actually signed her up a couple years ago and she did nothing with it and i sent a message oh, I'm like girl I, you're a nurse i want you to look at this like you yeah. seriously need to look at this and yeah. she did and she's like i'm in and look at her now like she's freaking amazing i just yeah. love her but yes so sharing this with a couple of people and now, you know, again, me doing it first before saying anything, you know, to a lot of people, because yeah. when we did this and people are like, well, wait a minute, I thought you were plant based. I was. We tried it. It was right. great. I'm glad that we did. I'm glad that I know what I know now Right. Glad that we did it. But now you need to come on board with me on this because the, the science, be I'm always about the science behind it. And yeah. Um, so what have you what have you learned more now? Because I feel like there's there's still. You know, my mission is just to keep educating people. Mm -hmm. um, I I fully believe that we've been just utterly lied to for the last 60 years. Um, there's a lot of, of greed. There's a lot of money. There's a lot of corporate crap behind all of this. Um, you know, if you can trace it all back yourself, you do enough digging, it's right there. It's just not out in the open for people, clearly, yeah. right? Um, but you can find it. Um, you know, what What have you learned now? Like you said, your husband thought he was going to get gout, right? We learned this thing because whatever reason, uh, I'm sure just like when we took fat out of the human diet, there's still, I can't find one piece of published uh, peer-reviewed research that actually says that that was a good idea. Um, that I was all... I was all based off of crap. And let me tell you something, I've done a lot of digging. Um, <laughs> that doesn't exist, you know? Um, but I feel like these stigmas, you know, these things people get caught up in mm -hmm. um, and it's hurting people. It's hurting yeah. people. It's making people sick. Like, so what have you guys come to the realization of? Like you spent so many years doing this, Barb, um, and you've done the plant-based, you've done all these other things. Like, what do you, I mean, what do you, what's your realization now? Like, where are you at now in life when it comes to like food and what you've learned with me yeah. and, and, and natural again? So honestly, Jesse, I think it's, I think the biggest thing for me about the ER shred are the culprit foods mm. and, and, and ER eliminate reset, right? Yeah. Eliminate everything. And when I tell people this, eliminate everything, they're like, well, can I still have this? No. Yeah. Can I still have this? No. It's only eleven days. Right. I promise you're going to survive. It's only eleven days. Eliminate, yeah. and then I want you to introduce one food at a time back in, and they're like, okay. And they do, and they're like, um, wow, this is crazy. Yeah. And I would say, my grocery shopping is cut in more than half because all I buy are the meat and the eggs and the butter. Right. Butter and the salt yeah uh, and honestly that that's all i buy that's always in my freezer ready to go now if we want anything in addition to that i'll run to the grocery store and grab it mm -hmm. but i don't grocery shop for it yeah we get it when we need it yep that's it yeah, it's it's so it's huge i get it i totally get it and unless your people are experiencing it um i know it's kind of hard to, to understand like yeah that's such a relief right there in itself, like especially from I know from like I just know what you've been through bodybuilding. I mean, and and well, in that industry, you know, yeah. and the the prepping and the counting and the container after container <laughs> after container and the smell of a fish on a plane, of really cold food. Um, and and not only that, like I found, you know, training as an athlete, the carb way of what mm -hmm. I thought I needed as an endurance athlete. That's, that was me falling into myths based off of what I thought was honestly good research. You know what I mean? And I'm like, gosh, darn it. I fell for it again. Um, yeah. but you know, going, doing it that way and then doing it this way, the ease is drastic, right? Mm -hmm. Like the, the, mm -hmm. the less stress of life of having that, the recovery is amazing, which is obviously key in in what we do mm -hmm. um and i also find like the prep obviously is 10 times easier and here's my biggest thing barb do you notice that like 
Some people are slaves to food and they're on a weight loss journey. Mm -hmm. I was a slave to food because I was always starving. Like, even though I was healthy, you know what I mean? Like I was starving all the time, Mm -hmm. constantly. And now it's like, I eat these big portions of fat and protein. And like, I am like, there's never a time where I'm like, oh my God, I got to eat. Like I'm going to rip somebody's, you know? I, and now it's like, I didn't even have my second shake today. Cause it's like, I can't, cause I want my meat meal. Right. I know if I have my shake, I'm not going to have my meat and I want my meat meal. Like I yeah. want to eat. Yeah. yeah. We went Sometimes to I, literally, I literally find myself like consuming something literally because, you know, where you and I are at in our athletic journey, I need people to really understand this point. Where you and I are at in our athletic journey, we're striving for like, you know, 1%, 2% of a, of a fluctuation and difference in striation or something to that nature. So we're really strict on like counting and, and getting in the right amounts to know what our bodies need from the years of experience. That, that's really important to understand, okay, when I, when I share this with you. But, you know, I find myself consuming something for that purpose of knowing like, I need to do this because I need to maintain this muscle mass while doing this extra endurance. And that's my goal. That's, that, that's my mission. You know what I mean? So, um, but yeah, I'm with you. Like it's, it's crazy to me. It blows my mind. And it's, so it's crazy that you just mentioned that I'll, I'll just touch on this real quick. When I met my husband, mm-hmm. Randy, 10 years ago, um, he owned a transportation company and part of that was taxi. So I'd be at his house in the middle of the day and I'm working cause I have this laptop lifestyle, right? Yeah. And he's like, hey, come on this run with me. I'm like, all right. So I jump in and, and we'd be gone for like an hour and a half or so. And I'm like, well, I'm hungry. And he goes, you just ate an hour before we left. I'm like, yeah. well, I know, but I need to like feel my body. Like, right. like I had I had breakfast this morning. How can you even be hungry? Like you, yeah. there's no way you, every two and a half to three hours I eat. And that's even true today. You should be eating five to six times a day. The, the lesson I learned in that, and, and it was from Randy when he would say that, he's like, there's absolutely no way at 130 pounds that you can be hungry and I'm 200 pounds and I'm not. There's just absolutely no way. Mm. And that's when the lesson of you fuel your body, you don't feed a hunger. Fuel your body, yeah. don't feed a hunger. If you go beyond that three-hour point, now you've put your body into a completely different mode. And it starts going into that starvation mode, as you know within three hours and then you go oh wait oh, i'm so hungry i'm just gonna stop at the gas station and you know grab this well this is healthy enough right and or i'm gonna grab this so this is yeah. gonna hold me over until i get home and i can have my carrots and celery and hummus and whatever else so 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 learning to fuel your body yeah puts you in a completely different mindset when you look at food yeah what other things besides you mentioned you your husband lost 11 pounds i think you said you lost nine right or what i yep, nine yeah. mm-hmm. um besides that what other things you know we talk always about the er shred as this empowerment movement it's so much more than the superficial thing that i i feel everybody gets trapped into in the diet industry and weight loss industry and nutrition industry like there's more to this you know what i mean what other things have you realized have you guys realized and then i know you shared it with people what um share share some of their wins if you will too to kind of show people yeah the bigger spectrum of, of kind of what you get when you raise your hand and say yes to yourself. That's awesome. Yeah. So one of the, one of the bigger things that, that I, that I learned as well is the, you know, the, the um, food wise, I can drink milk again. I went 13 years without milk because I was lactose intolerant. Crazy. But guess what? It wasn't the lactose. Guess what it was? It was all of the garbage that's in there. So I can drink, I can drink whole organic, whole milk, whole organic milk, not 2%, not skim milk, whole organic milk. Yeah. I can drink, I can have whole, or I can have half and half cream. That's what I make my, my ice cream with when I'm mm-hmm. not in my 11 day protocol. Mm-hmm. Um, when I started sharing this with people that, you know, I, I've had I've had this business for 11 years. I've been very, very successful in it. In, in the beginning, I was very successful. Mm-hmm. I took my foot off the gas pedal for a little bit. Um, coming back into this in January and then having Susan come aboard, Susan has, has an almost 40-pound weight loss since January. 
I want to explain how important that is. Some people will go, oh my God, 40 pounds since January. That's not, you know what? This is a slow and steady. This You didn't put 40 pounds on in three weeks or in 11 days. You're not going to take it off in 11 days. Yeah. It's not a quick fix program. This is something that our bodies need to adjust to. And as we adjust, as, as our bodies adjust to the food that we're putting in, it's also a mindset. We have to we have to remind ourselves again that we're fueling our bodies and we're putting the right things in there so that it responds. And when you start adding those culprit foods back in, or excuse me, adding those foods back in and finding the culprits, eliminate them again. Yeah. Get rid of them. If they bother you, get rid of them. It's not serving your body. Just because yeah. they say you should have broccoli doesn't mean that your body likes broccoli. Now, maybe you sit down and you eat steak. And you can eat steak just fine. And then you sit down and, and you eat um, steak and a potato, broccoli and chicken together and you're fine. But then you put that broccoli and the steak together and you're like, whoa, yeah. something just happened here. Broccoli and steak don't go together in your body. Yeah. Chicken and broccoli can. Right. Yeah. So the, the, it's it's even the, the, the combination of the foods that we're putting in our bodies together. We... So would you say, would you say from a coaching perspective, um, coaching people before, mm -hmm. right? Well, from, from all that we've learned of what we were doing mm -hmm. and then coaching people now, I've noticed this crazy, crazy shift, right? Have you noticed the difference in like sustainability, um, people coming back ease of your client or person or friend or teammate, whatever we want to call them, um, ease of that person getting through um, initial phases and then continuing on with success using this this way, this style more? Yeah, absolutely. Because because they're 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 getting a different result. Yeah. The, the result before was might have been weight loss, um, but they they still like felt sluggish or they weren't sleeping well or they their bowel movements weren't what they were supposed to be right and but honestly for some people to really wrap their heads around you want me to eat how much butter yeah and i'm really going to eat red meat yeah. that much and so <laughs> and you know exactly i can tell by the look on your face you've got you've experienced the same thing yeah i believe that I, I believe in this 100% or I wouldn't be on this call with you because I don't, I'm not a blow sunshine up someone's butt just so that you're going to join me and do what I do. For sure. That's not me. Like you do you boo, right? You'll see me <laughs> over here doing me and doing what I feel is best for me. For sure. And when you're over there doing you and you're watching what I'm doing and I'm having the success with that, I welcome you back in and, and let's do this together. So the coaching part of it is way less, to be honest with you. Way less. Um, Cause once you can get through a two day cleanse, like dude, celebrate the, you know what out of that. Yeah. I'm a big swear. I like to swear. So I haven't even sworn yet on here, but. Well, congratulations. If you've watched any of my younger videos, you, you know that I. <laughs> my husband hates it. He's like, sweetheart, you're way too pretty to talk like that. I'm like. Oh, People stop. tell me that I can get my message out in more educated words. And I go, well, this is the uneducated side of me. But you're listening, aren't you? Like when I say <laughs> shit, people are like, ooh, she means business. <laughs> For sure. Um, yeah, this is all this is all fascinating stuff. I love it. I mean, there's so – I mean, I'm already at the top of the hour, which sucks. Um, ah, already? Yeah, seriously. Um, I, I, I feel like we should do more. Um, I think we can do different categories. I think we can, you know, we kind of, we've learned the same thing. We can, we can kind of vibe that way. I feel we can definitely bring more value to people. Um, mm -hmm. But thank you for showing up. Um, thanks for being you. Thanks for joining us. Thanks thank for you having for inviting me. me. Um, thanks for bringing Susan. She makes me laugh and smile every day. <laughs> Um, she's, yeah. she's amazing. I mean, she's an example, you know, this world today is, is there's a lot of people hurting real bad. Um, they're hurting in health. They're hurting financially. They're hurting with just direction, uh, of where to go. 
Um, and Susan's an ex- I mean, she was super successful. She's still a super, uh, not she yeah. was, I mean, she, the lady just is successful in what she does. Let me put it that way. First off, um, you know, she's, she's a RN. She was in the administrative side. She realized that, that, that just wasn't her gig. You know, mm-hmm. you introduced her to this amazing opportunity and with, the ER shred, not only can we just transform people's lives physically, um, but we kind of have this cool little side thing that goes along with it. If you so wish, um, mm. that's the key. If you so wish, um, Barb and I love it. it. It's drastically transformed our lives. We know it so many people. my life 10 years ago. Yeah. When- I mean, you've literally created uh, yeah. a six plus figure empire, which I didn't tap into purposely tonight. Um, just so you guys know, Barb is so much more than she just shared tonight. Um, she's like, she's a badass boss, babe. You know what <laughs> I mean? Like, I don't know if you like to go by that. My girlfriend hates my, my wife. He hates when I say I that, love but, it. I um, love it. You know, uh, you know, she's literally created this and it's been really cool. And she's very honest. And I love that too about you. I did the same thing, Barb. And I think I want to talk to you about that too, because I did that shot and then kind of, eh, and then yeah. now I'm like, I have this new light and passion. And like, this is like, I was like, Oh, this ER is shred lit you know that I mean? for us. ER shred lit that for us. I didn't mean for to sure. interrupt you. You know, when this company started and Lenny Evans, I, I, I have to thank Lenny Evans from my whole heart of how much I absolutely love this man um, for, for introducing me to the ER shred, but he mm. was the very first person that I met. Um, January of 2011 at my very first event that I went to and he just looked at me and he's like well I don't know who you are but you whoever you are now you're going to be even bigger and better than that you are amazing you're beautiful you're this and I'm like no one's ever told me that oh and by the way you're successful and like no one ever told me that before and when he said those words to me I'm like I believed him yeah like well yes I am I can and like he he believed in me before I believed in myself Mm. and my success, a lot of my success is due in part to him. But I Mm. have to tell you when, when you're in this community, this community is not just me and you and like, it's, it's, it's the ER shredded community. It's the Mm. whole entire isogenic community. It's, it's all of us. And this company is based on what is called a nine day system, which we've turned into the 11 day. Right is now the 11 day shred and we're coming full circle from 20 years ago when Mm -hmm. we started back to the basics we've got to get back to those core products and that's exactly what you and sean and crystal have done is bring us back to basically our ground zero Mm. and our starting point and we build from here so i think it's a beautiful thing right it's a beautiful thing And, and the cool thing is barb um i don't think people realize that when you're when you get to that place and then you start to build from there, all the other amazing stuff that we actually do have access to, mm-hmm. right? That that's you know we have this foundation, and once we have that rock solid ass foundation, now we can start framing, right, and figure yeah. out other things. Um, and we have so many avenues and amazing things to tap into, and just think about how much better they would all work. If your body was absorbing and processing and functioning the way that it should be. Uh-huh. Because you're fueling it. Right. And yes. that's another reason why we're okay. so strict in the beginning. But anyways, listen, I appreciate okay. you. Seriously, so, so super thankful for you. Um, you. I totally understand where you're coming from with Lenny because every time I get off a phone call with that man, I feel like I've been touched by the light from above and like, you just have no choice but to feel like a better human. Like there's a reason that man has so many millionaires, um, you know what I mean, underneath him. Yeah. Uh, it's There's a reason. Um, and he's just a gift. So I appreciate I'll, you, Barb. I'll but, let you in on a secret. We have a word called JOM, J-O-O-M, jacked mm-hmm. out of my mind. And when you talk to Lenny Evans, you are JOM, J-O-O-M. You are JOM, for sure. Jacked out of my mind. And that's you guys, I'm going to end with that. That's sorry, I got a fuzzy in here. Um, that's that's what this ER shred, this come alive. That's what yeah. you are. You get just jacked out of your mind with for sure all the For sure. So thank yeah. you so much. Oh man, this was such seriously. <laughs> I am so grateful that you were like my first interview back after um, the know, baby. After the baby. Yeah, I mean, what's up? I said, congrats, Papa. Thank you. Um, you're this is such a gift. Like it was so refreshing and lightning and and. I love the, the, the past that we went down. I hope people um, pull the nuggets 
that that are in there and maybe go back and kind of listen again to kind of re-pull because I think you drop down a lot of nuggets um, yes. that people can really steal and I know there's so much more in you so show up to the group guys www.ershredders.com Barb's in there every day thousands and literally thousands of other people are in there every day um, going crazy um, join us like just freaking join us tomorrow night is our shred your testimonial call um, every single week it's it's just awesome you, you literally feel like crying like the stories are just amazing week after week after week and then thursday barb you're in the spotlight again i'm back again you and susan right yes oh dude okay so barb and susan together i don't even under i don't even know if bob sivright like my other er shred ambassador i don't even know well actually you know what he's been shredding for the last year and he's he's pretty jacked these days I call him like my silver fox. You know what I mean? He's like, he's jacked up. So maybe he's got the energy, but that's going to be you two together. I don't know, Bob. Good luck with that one. He's on the call. I see him. So <laughs> Barb and Susan are back on and they're going to share more on sharing the ER shred, um, what that does for you, why it's so amazing, why everybody should share the ER shred. Um, it literally went, when, remember, when tides rise, all boats rise. And that's what we are. We're a community of like-minded who are lifting each other up. And literally, guys, everybody freaking wins. And I can't wait for you guys to share all that knowledge on Thursday. Like, I'll be tuning in. Uh, and I'm super excited to, to hear all of that, too. So that's Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern. So lots of good stuff this week. Yes. All right, Barb. Guys, okay. listen, thanks so much. I appreciate you, Barb. Uh, Thank and we'll you. talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye.